Hi, I'm Psycat Cosplay, and I have a problem with claws. And by problem, I mean I see a costume that has claws, and I have to make it. Also, welcome back to my channel. So, the new teaser for the KDA Baddest video came out. The 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 single is out, and I saw Evelyn's design, and um, yeah, th this happened. Uh, I'm making Evelyn. And so today's video is a tutorial on the costume for KDA Baddest Evelyn. This video is only part of the costume. I'm going to be doing a tutorial for the full costume and I'm going to be doing patterns and a build guide for the full costume as well. That is not quite yet available, but if you're checking this video out a couple weeks from now, check the links down below for my store because it's probably up now. This video is going to cover making of these claws, necklace, and the spikes. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any additional comments or questions about the making of process in this video, don't forget to leave a comment down below. All right, let's go ahead and get into making these guys. Like I said in the intro, I will have a build guide and patterns available for this costume in the coming weeks. Check out the links to my store to see if I've posted it already. This build guide will encompass the whole costume, accessories, sewn parts, and wig styling. The patterns will include patterns for the accessories, spikes, and coat dress. However, the coat dress pattern will not be graded. A separate graded sewing pattern might be available in the future once I have the time to grade it. For Evelyn, I decided to make the finger armor claws, whatever you want to call them, out of Warbla. They look like metal in the art, but um, I don't metal work. And they need to be thin and durable, so for me that meant thermoplastics it is. I actually ended up using three different types of Warbla on the fingers, brown, black, and pearly since I was using scraps. After having used all three different types, I would recommend either black or pearly over brown. The texture of those two are better and less bumpy. The great thing about Warbla is even though it's expensive, the scraps can be heated up, combined, and made into new sheets. I've been accumulating scraps for years and I have a huge bin of them that I dip into occasionally for projects like this. A sheet of Warbla is about a millimeter thick and not super stable as a single layer on its own. I decided not to back the fingers with foam, but you could do this if you wanted or you could use thin cardboard to back that piece of Warbla for a thinner piece instead of what I did. It's really up to you. I used a double layer of Warbla, so about two millimeters thick. A double layer does not deform as easily as a single layer and is easier to handle and work with since it's thicker. When working with Warbla, please be aware that Warbla, you have to heat it up, it gets really hot, and it gets sticky when hot. It can stick to your work surface, I have found that out the hard way. I work with it on a silicone baking mat. This is one that I got from Costco years ago. You can tell it's been around for a while from all the paint and weirdness going on with it, but it works. It's great. Get yourself a silicone baking mat. You will thank yourself later. I made a pattern for each finger out of my favorite newspaper and tape. Each finger is a slightly different size, so I made a pattern for each finger. In the video here, I'm showing you how I did the pattern for the middle finger. I used the pattern for both my right and left hands, even though my fingers are slightly different sizes on each hand. Yeah, I know that's kind of weird, but that's what happens. But they, the pattern works well enough for both hands. The nice thing about Warbla is I can make the piece and then by heating it and bending it and pulling on it or pushing on it, I can adjust the fit of the piece if it isn't quite right. This is the benefit of using this material for something like this over foam or 3D printing. 3D printing would also make a very nice and thin armor for your fingers. However, the fit would probably need to be adjusted multiple times for different fingers, for different people. 
you might have to end up reprinting this a bunch of times. I don't have a 3D printer either right now, so I went with thermoplastic. Everyone's fingers are different, everyone's hand sizes are different, so if you are using build guide and patterns, remember you will probably need to make adjustments for your own hands and fingers. I always do recommend printing the patterns and trying out the paper mock-ups before making your own and adjusting the pattern as necessary. Pro tip for cutting a warbler is to heat it up slightly before cutting. This will make it easier to cut, especially if you're cutting out small pieces like the finger pieces. I would only do this though if you're using slightly thicker double layer of warbla, two millimeters or three millimeters, a single millimeter layer. You don't really want to heat that up because it's going to wrinkle a lot and that's not great. But for what I'm doing, heating it up beforehand and then cutting it out is great. The finger pieces overlap with the points towards the hands, if that makes sense. So I made the ring section first, followed by the knuckle and then the fingertip. To make these, I heat up the individual piece and start, once it's heated up, start forming it around my finger. For the fingertip, I started by pushing the seam together at the tip and then closing the seam down towards the open end. I got lazy and didn't feel like sanding down the seams but you can totally sand thermoplastic and make the seams nice and clean and basically disappear. I just didn't do it because I wanted to make this more quickly than if I took the time to actually sand, sand your stuff. Be aware thermoplastic gets very hot when you heat it up and can burn your skin. So be careful and allow it to cool a bit before putting it on your hands before you start working with it and forming it around your fingers. I've been working with Warbla for years and have a good feel for it, but if this is your first time working with Warbla, be careful. I've gotten my fair share of burns and burnt off my fingerprints over the years. If I'm working with a bunch of scraps to form sheets, I will use gloves to handle the bits as they need to get very hot to combine them. If you have never worked with thermoplastic before, I would recommend getting yourself a pair of utility gloves, rubber, rubberized gloves. They're like 10 bucks, maybe maximum at the hardware store worth. I have had the pair of gloves I've had for years. They have never failed. They're starting to crack and I probably should replace them, but they still work. Once I had all the pieces for the finger armor made, time to finish these guys off and by that I mean prime and paint because remember to not prime is a crime that goes for prop making and for makeup I'm priming them with hex flex which is a brush on primer you can get this from TNT cosplay supply I am an affiliate link is down below you could prime these with a spray on primer but be careful if you do to secure your pieces to a surface as they can fly away easily with spray-on primers. No, I'm not speaking from experience. I am doing two to three layers of brush-on primer and then it's time to paint. I'm doing a base layer of weight acrylic since I made this with multiple different types of warble, which are different colors, so I have multiple different colors of warble going on. It's easier to have a nice blank canvas that's the same across the board also, when using metallics to increase the pigmentation of the metallic, having a base coat underneath really helps. Either white or black or whatever color you want to do under that metallic. Next is painting it the metallic color. Painting it silver. And I'm using a metallic silver from my paint stash. This particular one is an Americana acrylic paint called Shimmering Silver. Alright, all painted. Done, right? Well, not quite. All these pieces have to stay on your finger somehow. How do you do that? Well, elastic gets the job done. I'm using quarter inch elastic, which because of the thing that shall not be named uh, is readily available on pretty much every website. I'm using this with a bit of hot glue and gluing the elastic to the fingertip first. You don't need much glue. Be aware that 
this will make the finger pieces fit a bit more snugly on your finger. You may want to account for this when making them. Uh, maybe I should have mentioned that earlier. Oops. Anyway, don't glue all the way to the edge of the piece. So you don't want to glue the elastic all the way to the edge as you want to allow for the pieces to overlap when your finger is at rest and not flexed. Figure out where the knuckle section is going and do the same thing for the knuckle and then glue on the ring section. Bit of hot glue and elastic, boom, finger. Next up is the necklace. The necklace piece you can probably make out of fabric or buy something similar, but I'm all types of extra and I had the warble out for the fingers already, so I said screw it and decided to make it out of warble. With how long the spikes are and how heavy they would be, I figured that this was the easiest and sturdiest option. In the build guide, there will be a basic sizing pattern for the straps and spikes, but the sizing will vary depending on your neck size, so be aware that even with a pattern, this is a very custom piece. Like I said earlier, I have a lot of experience working with Warbla, and making a piece like this out of Warbla can be quite tricky, and it takes time and patience. If you are new to this material, don't be frustrated if things don't work out the first time and you have to remake it. That's the beauty of Warbla. You can heat it up, smoosh it together, and redo it. To make the strap sections, I combined a bunch of scraps and I rolled them out with the handle of an old paintbrush. I'm real high tech like that. To an approximate thickness of about two millimeters, the same thickness as I was using for the fingers. My neck is about 12 inches in diameter, so I made a 12 inch template of a 12 inch long, half inch wide strip. I know the piece isn't going to go all the way around my neck and we'll have an opening at the back for it to slip on and off so the strap pieces don't need to be quite as long as that to start with but I made the template to kind of know generally what the length was. If you're wondering, Warble is quite flexible when it's really thin so the finished piece is actually really comfortable and flexes easily with neck movement and is easy to take on and off. While the warbler was still warm, I traced the template and cut out the strip. And then I carefully heated the strip into a shape that was vaguely necklace shaped, which is an open circle, and let it cool completely before moving it. When warbler is really thin like this and not backed with foam or cardboard, it's malleable for a really long time, so be careful and go slowly when making a piece like this and make sure to give it the time it needs to cool completely and harden completely. I repeated this step two more times to make three strips and the three tiers of the necklace, making the strips slightly longer each time since your neck gets wider as it meets the shoulders. The lowest tier I decided to angle in a bit as that piece lays sort of on where my neck joins my shoulders and that part of my anatomy is not straight up and down, it's angled. So I very carefully angled that strip in. To connect all the pieces, there are little strips that run vertically in two places on the front. At least that's what I can see from the art. I put all the strips on my neck and marked the locations of where that vertical strip would go. I was uh, a bit off when I put them on and the bits aren't quite centered, but it works so I didn't fix it. Heat up some really tiny strips. Heat where you are connecting them to. Pro tip, always heat both pieces of Warbler when joining the pieces so that the bond is nice and strong and they won't fall apart. And slowly and carefully start to connect the pieces. You will need to wait for the pieces to fully cool and harden before moving to the next step, which means you sit there and you hold this thing in the confirmation that you want until it's cooled. So there's a lot of sitting and holding of things involved. I would recommend having a good TV show on or watch someone on Twitch while you're doing this, which is what I did. I also connected all the pieces at the back for added stability. Also at the back, make sure that there aren't any sharp edges. You're going to thank yourself later for blunting any sharp bits when you're putting this thing on and off. Believe me, you will thank yourself. For the spikes, I heated up and rolled a bunch of scraps together into a spike shape. I made five spikes in three different lengths. 
heated up the larger end, heated up the part of the necklace where it was going on and popped them on. And then it's time to finish this thing off. It's finishing them in the same way as I did the claws using the same primer and the same acrylic paints except a couple of different colors. I painted the pan silver before remembering that the thing is actually a metallic black but that's an easy mistake to fix. And then boom, necklace. And now to make the glass, no, no, I'm not that extra. I'm um, extra, but not that extra, so I'ma buy those. On to the last thing for this tutorial, which are the spikes. The spikes are, look like they're floating on the costume. So I wanted to make them lightweight, make them as lightweight as possible. So I'm making them out of six millimeter foam and making it hollow. You could make this out of 10 millimeter foam and sandwich them together and then sand it down to make the bevels. However, that would make it a little bit heavier. So we're going hollow. The spikes look multifaceted. So I'm gonna make each side of the spike have three sections, one center section and two sides. I'm gonna pattern those up real quickly using my trusty newspaper and get those traced onto the foam. I almost forget to put on registration marks, but ha ha ha. I remember last second. Trace, cut out, and prep for glue. When you are gluing together something that's angled, you're going to want to cut the edges of some of the pieces at a 45 degree angle to make the pieces come together better, especially at the tip. You want to remove material from the interior of the piece so that the tip comes together into a nice, sharp looking, daggery, spiky tip. My preferred glue for gluing together foam pieces is barge. So I used barge to glue the three side pieces together and then glue those sides together to make the full spike. I forgot to pattern the top of the piece. So I quickly traced the open end of the spike onto foam to make a pattern, which I then forgot to copy onto paper and then had to make a paper pattern later. Don't worry, I made the pattern. Once that pattern was made and that piece cut out, I cut two holes in the top for the handle section. For the handle, quote unquote, I don't really know what that's called, that, the best thing I know what to call it. I am using 12 millimeter foam dowels from TNT Cosplay Supply. A foam is also from them. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm an affiliate links down below. I'm not selling out. No, not at all. I'm cutting a shallow divot in each dowel to accommodate the wire that's going to go in the middle of this handle. I wanted to make sure that the handle was sturdy and I could use the handle to hold up the piece because this is going to be wired onto a long fabric strip and wire so that I can pose the thing. So this is wire from an old coat hanger. I wouldn't recommend using floral wire that bends, that will deform too easily and won't be sturdy. To finish up the spike, I'm going to glue the handle together and then glue the top of the spike and the handle onto the spike. Pro tip, Insert the handle into the top before you glue that whole thing down and put glue on the inside of the spike to glue the handle to the wall of the inside of the spike. Once that's done, you're pretty much ready to go. Well, you need to prime and paint the thing, which is the same process as the necklace and the finger armor. So I'm not going to show it in this video. And that's it for this part of the KDA Baddest Evelyn tutorial. The next video will include the wig styling and making of the coat jacket. All right, now it's time for outro me. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any additional questions now that you've watched the whole video, don't forget to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and bell notification for the next time I put up a new video. All right, guys, I'll see you in part two of this Making of Evelyn series.